Shantipur Conclave. So the next session uh, we are going to start is going to be Nepal in the global stage. But before we start with the session, I'd like to make a few informal announcements. I'd like to request, uh, especially first, everybody who is uh, near the door to kindly come in and join us inside the hall. I'd also like to request our hotel staff to kindly set up the uh, stage. Uh, once again, to everybody who is outside this hall and wanting to join this session, I'd like to request you to kindly come in and uh, join us. To everybody who is inside this hall, a warm welcome and uh, a humble request to everybody to kindly switch off their mobile phones or keep them in silent mode. I think that keeping them on in a silent mode is a, a more sensible thing to do because you'll have to ask questions through the app. So you'll need your mobile phone for that. So you cannot switch it off, but I'd humbly like to request all of you to kindly um, keep it in silent mode or vibration. Uh, so that we don't have any disturbances during the session. So this next session is going to be about Nepal in the global stage. And uh, moderating this session, we have Mr. Sujeev Shakya, who is Nepal's CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist. He's also a columnist with both Kantapur and the Kathmandu Post, and he's also the author of uh, a book, uh, the book, Unleashing Nepal. So ladies and gentlemen, with a big round of applause, I'd like to request our moderator, Mr. Sujeev Shakya, to kindly join me on stage. And then I'd like to request our uh, speakers, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Pradeep Gewali, Minister for Foreign Affairs, and Honorable Dr. Yuvraj Khadiwada, Finance Minister, to kindly join us on stage as well. So I'll now hand over the proceedings to our moderator. Thank you, Sadiksha. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be uh, in conversation in this session. And uh, this is going to be a 30-minute session. And uh, given the paucity of time, uh, we are not going to have questions from the floor. But uh, as the app is on, I've taken some questions that are coming from the app, and I've noted them. Uh, yesterday, Prime Minister uh, KP uh, Oli made a historic speech here, and perhaps for us, one of the most beautiful ones since he took over last year. It was music to our ears, that the emphasis was very clear, we need more investments, and foreign investments are welcome. I think that was the key messaging we have. And today we have two key ministers in his uh, cabinet, Honorable Dr. Yuvaraj Khatiwara and Honorable uh, Pradeep Kemali Jew, both of them. Uh, were part of the delegation that led, went to the World Economic Forum in Davos recently. So today's uh, conversations are going to be on looking forward, you know, as we talk about unleashing Nepal's potential. We are not really here to criticize and to see what are the challenges. I think there are a lot has been talked about, a lot has been talked about what's going wrong. But we, can, we are here to look at how we can move forward and how we can re recalibrate our economic growth story and uh, how we can talk about unleashing Nepal's uh, potential. So without much ado, um, you know, sort of, um, maybe I'll just start off, you know, with the discussion with uh, their visit to Davos in uh, January, and uh, we had uh, our prime minister and our delegation participate for the first time. Our foreign minister and finance minister was there, and perhaps this was one of the great times when Nepal was on the uh, global center stage. So what has been sort of uh, anecdotal stories, experiences of uh, your visit? Uh, maybe I'll start with uh, Honorable Pradeep Kimali. Uh, thank you, Sajivji. Uh, thank you for providing us this wonderful opportunity. And thank you to Contemporary Media Group for hosting this uh, very important uh, conclave, which will provide to bring the diverse opinions in uh, one place and to extract the essence. It is, uh, I think, a tradition of this region that we uh, very much give importance to the discourses. Bade bade jayate tattu boda, it is a famous saying. So uh, I wish the every success of this conclave. Uh, 
the invitation to the right honorable prime minister kabir sharma oli to the house and the uh, highest level uh, delegation or representation in that forum is a manifestation of the changed context and growing profile of nepal uh, i need to say sajib ji you know uh, nepal went through a very uh, difficult time uh, during the conflict and we lost more than 10 years to manage uh, the conflict to conclude the transition uh, transition uh, paved the way for uh, the instability uh, policy inconsistency that's why in external front we were unable to attack the potentials uh, to cope up with the uh, change dynamics of the glo global uh, economy and global polity uh, against this background our um, uh, participation in davos forum was very important that provided us an uh, important opportunity to showcase the nepal's uh, desire and resolve to uh, have a rapid socio economic transformation to attain the uh, prosperity uh, through uh, the broader participation and the goodwill of the international community uh, and uh, to uh, share our own experiences on that regard uh, the some of high level uh, bilateral meetings uh, discussion with uh, business sectors uh, ceos of famous um, companies uh, that uh, all created uh, environment to make a network for nepal uh, and now uh, our uh, effort will be uh, based upon that uh, personality and a network uh, to uh, implement uh, or to invite those uh, business community uh, to those uh, uh, circle to be a meaningful collaboration in nepal's development so i think uh, the, our participation was very very meaningful thank you thank you minister kamali um uh, dr kathiwara you know what was your impressions about davos you know i mean it's a place where all the finance ministers all the businesses come together uh, so what what has been your any any anecdotal interesting experiences you know would be useful that's working uh, thank you sujeev ji also let me join um, my cabinet colleague foreign minister pradeep kamali ji to for appreciating kantipur media house uh, for initiating all this dialogue in a much more positive way and taking all of us together to the road of uh, peace development and welfare of nepali people so thank you once again on the question of davos uh, the meetings which uh, our prime minister attended and spoke uh, our foreign minister has already mentioned some of them um, that we were able to just showcase our development road map and uh, also the world which was curious of this government because uh, uh, we are the government with hammer and sickle so uh, uh, although we are elected democratically people would be curious to know what kind of policies this government has and uh, we were able to show that uh, we are elected government with uh, full democratic uh, practices uh, we do take along with the state the players of the state like the private sector the community and the cooperative sectors and we do collectively the development work of the country in such a complementary way that we don't find ourselves to be outplaced uh, to any other so it's a it's a kind of complementary and uh, kind of collaborative approach we are following i think we were able to uh, give the message to the world that uh, it is a kind of country where uh, we have uh, no kind of any kind of democratic deficit that was the first point the second point was how we were able to implement the federation federation which are nepal is of course the youngest uh, federal state so we were there to also showcase how fast we were able to translate federalism into action and it is in less than one year's time that we have been able to fix some of the problems associated with federalism particularly on sharing resources and opportunities and responsibilities that's the second the third one i think uh, is uh, having our informal dialogue and also formal meetings with several uh, investors uh, to solicit their investment and their interest towards nepal 
on a, on a personal note, I would like also to mention that some of the sessions were really, really interesting and that caught my attention, in particular about measuring progress, activity and welfare of the country. I can see a lot of debate going in this country. People talking about some of the numbers and talking that the economy is going down. The discussion that took place in Davos was more than GDP. It was beyond GDP. How to measure welfare, how to measure progress of a country. Here, GDP is doing very well, but it's not enough. That must translate into the proper welfare of the people. And how can we do that? So that session I found very interesting and we have really to have our further discourse on measuring our progress and welfare through some other upscaled or I would say even higher level of indicators other than GDP. That was interesting. One other session which was really interesting was on investment. The global investment trend is declining. That was uh, not a very uh, good news to all of us. But still the global economy was growing and is growing. So we wanted to know what are the causes behind this uh, uh, declining trade, investment and also the economy, global economy keeping up. And my argument there was that maybe productivity of capital has gone up, efficiency had, might have gone up. So why do you need more investment if you are increasing the productivity of capital? So um, I think some of the interventions we could make there, make there also had a lot of attention of the world that we should be looking beyond capital accumulation for growth. We must be looking into the productivity of all the inputs, including capital and labor we put in the process. I think this debate is... Uh, it keeps on going, but that was an interesting event. Thank you. No, thank you. That is, I think it's uh, very interesting for us to learn because I think um, watching uh, our Prime Minister live and uh, in Davos, it was uh, also a proud moment for us uh, Nepalese. And we also wanted to hear some behind the stories on what happened and what you learned. Thank you very much. So I would come back to Minister Gemali in terms of uh, if foreign investment is what we have to seek, if that is what we have to look for in terms of going to events like Davos and and uh, seeking, you know, sort of at global attention. So that is one time, and there will be a lot of things that we can do. But what is it that we are going to change, or what is happening around some of the conversation we started having was on the economic diplomacy issues, and how would our, you know, sort of foreign policy linked to investments, how would uh, our own embassies go through transformation? Maybe some, some light on that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh the major component of our, economic, our diplomatic conduct has now been shifted towards uh, economic diplomacy. Because for Nepal, our diplomatic engagements, our diplomatic uh, activities should serve the national uh, resolve, uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, prosperous Nepal and happy Nepali. To fulfill that uh, aspiration, uh, we need broader uh, global support and goodwill that's why our economic, uh, our um, diplomatic uh, activities should shift it towards uh, that direction. That's why uh, our ministry is uh, trying its best to uh, make new uh, arrangements on that regard. Uh, very recently, we have developed the country-specific profiles of major countries that will uh, give us. Uh, uh, basic information, what are the expectations of that, with that particular country and what are the potentials uh, of the engagements with that country. So uh, we have developed that type of country specific profile. Second, uh, I have already instructed our diplomats uh, abroad uh, to focus basically in five major areas. If they are uh, serving in the developed countries, uh, please try uh, your best to increase the ODA, though it is not uh, sufficient and its trend is declining. However, uh, by 2020, uh, when we are going to be graduated from the LDC status, and uh, for some uh, years, uh, uh, when we will be uh, able to uh, fulfill the reconstruction uh, projects, uh, reconstruction process, uh, at least for the time being, we need uh, ODA as well. But uh, uh, keeping in the mind that the trend is declining, our major focus is 
uh, in foreign direct investment. And, that's, uh, and we, I have already instructed uh, our missions to establish a new profile, a new image of Nepal. Uh, what are the major uh, components? Why uh, anybody is, uh, should uh, invest in Nepal? What are the potentials? What are the uh, opportunities? Uh, I have instructed them to at least focus on that regard, the demographic dividend, uh, basically the youths uh, in the majority, uh, with bigger, with uh, hardworking uh, nature and uh, uh, their honesty. Uh, increase, uh, growing uh, domestic market with 29 million people and uh, increased size of the uh, middle class. Third, located in the very uh, attractive uh, uh, location uh, among the uh, largest uh, market of uh, India and China. Uh, huge uh, potentials, natural uh, resources. These are the um, major um, enablers of our economic uh, development. I have um, instructed uh, the missions to uh, establish a new image Nepal is an uh, emerging, vibrant uh, economic vibe. Uh, third, tourism is one of the most important uh, um, uh, component of our economic uh, development. Uh, and um, next year, we, we are going to uh, uh, organize the visit in Nepal year 2020 to uh, fulfill uh, those uh, aspirations of the uh, two million uh, tourists. I have, uh, the, our missions are engaged to uh, branding Nepal. Uh, and fourth, Nepali diaspora is very, very important to uh, be a partner of the Nepal's uh, economic journey. So that's why uh, we have established uh, various platforms and mechanisms to uh, uh, engage them in Nepal's development. And fifth, our trade deficit is alarming. It is really uh, challenging. Uh, and uh, we are trying our best how we can uh, reduce the deficit, how we can uh, increase our export, how we can increase our products. That's why uh, our uh, missions are working on that regard. And we are trying our best to, to uh, create a new image of Nepal uh, as an uh, attractive uh, destination for investment. No, thank you. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Gamali. I think, it's, uh, I think it's very refreshing because in Nepal, it's very rare that we would have a uh, you know, foreign minister talking about economy. In Nepal, it's, you know, it is always seen as a finance ministry uh, you know, sort of, um, uh, area. And it's, it's good that, uh, because at the end of the day, it is about coordination. And this is really, uh, really great to hear this. And so if we are looking for investments, and if we are really we are pushing Nepal as an attractive investment destination, I think that's what uh, the finance ministry is also looking at. Um, rather than, as we said, not really emphasizing only on the summit, but to really look at uh, uh, sort of what are the sort of broad counters on where we are looking at changing the investment climate because that's what is going to be key and you know for for all our embassies to go and say that come invest in Nepal you know do something in Nepal we need to uh, bring about it's not that the change is not happening but I think the process is accelerating we are looking forward to the investment summit too so how do you see some of the core couple of areas that you're really uh, pushing hard for Mr. Kadiwara Thank you, Sujiv Ji. Uh, along with the uh, political stability and new federal structure, which is uh, working in the most democratic way to govern the uh, investment structure and investors of the country, I would like to emphasize on several factors, but maybe uh, due to time constraint, I would like to speak for five of them. First, Nepal is an emerging country, emerging market. Also, uh, close to the neighboring big markets that our foreign minister has already mentioned. Only an emerging market has the greenfield investment opportunities. In a matured market, you don't get any such kind of greenfield investment opportunities. It could be a kind of um, brownfield or something others. So, first of all, right from the startup to increasing capacity to doing big business, we have the virgin land, so this is the, the best thing we can offer. 
But having said that the investment opportunities are there, we have also to create enabling environment. Uh, the cost of doing business has to be reduced and the ease of doing business has to be further facilitated. Uh, what the investors need, the first thing they want their investment to get uh, attractive return in a safe investment environment. Uh, I think if you look at the history of foreign investment in Nepal, most of them I, I agree and I think uh, many of the investors should also agree that they are making good money out of the investment and they are giving justice to the investors, the shareholders after paying good tax also to the country and creating jobs and contributing to the exchequer through revenue. So this is already an evident case that if you invest in Nepal, you get good return on your money. And second, while investing your money, your pr property would be protected. There would be no nationalization, expropriation or any kind of uh, risk to the property that you can invest. Repatriation is not a problem. Uh, law itself uh, has ensured that the principal interest, dividend, whatever workers' salaries could be repatriated uh, in a transparent and the most uh, easiest way. And third, we do have a very, um, uh, I would say, uh, properly managed labor market whereby our labor law now uh, ensures that uh, there should be no, no dispute in the industrial relations uh, as the uh, new labor law he, uh, has been com formulated with the type of right agreement between the employer, employee and the government. And as you see, there, has, there have been no strikes in the last couple of years. That itself manifests that labor market flexibility is there. Those who are laid off, laid off, their social security provision is mentioned there. And uh, uh, I think uh, that's uh, one of the areas where uh, we, we can say that we have a strong labor market condition. Not only that, our minimum wages, we have settled down and there should be no debate on, on, the, on the kind of wages, but, but still wages are low in Nepal. Uh, we don't want low wages to be the uh, comparative advantage, but still I would say even after minimum wages, they are comparable in South Asia or maybe even better. Uh, and then uh, some other provisions in the labor market also enable us uh, to create better industrial environment. The infrastructure, which is key to investors. Two years before, we were talking about power shortage. Uh, load shedding and all that. This year we don't talk much about the power shortage. Uh, there are some, uh, some erratic supplies of power at some point of the day because, te because of the technical error. Otherwise, uh, we can assure quality power supply 24 hours a day. So that's something which we can assure for power intensive industries. Uh, for infrastructure, if you are taking a power itself and you need a approach road, if you are doing uh, power itself, generating power and you need a transmission line, and if you need uh, land or forest for the purpose of doing this infrastructure, through the investment board's decision, we have made these things very, very simple. So this is an enabling environment. The fourth is the forward-looking legal environment. Uh, foreign Investment and Technology Transfer Act is key to foreign investors and that has been passed by the cabinet and would be taken to parliament this week. Uh, the Intellectual Property Act is drafted and it would also be taken to the parliament after cabinet approving it. Industrial Enterprise Act is also ready and uh, the amended Enterprise Act, which also is consistent with the federal setup. The federal, provincial and local governments being able to, uh, to manage and regulate industries is clearly defined in the act. And then there are several other acts that includes investment and PPP related act uh, and uh, public procurement act. Uh, I could name many of them, but I should not forget the company act which facilitates everything. So legal and, and regulatory framework, including the bylaws relating to hedging mechanism and one window for the operation of industries. I think they are some of the ones that I must mention. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's great that, you know, this Kantipur conclave, we are actually setting the stage for uh, the future discourse in terms of uh, opening up of investment. And uh, as we mentioned from yesterday, what the Prime Minister said, and hearing what you've been uh, talking about in the reforms. But I think as we go ahead in the investment summit, we would actually see some of these tangible stuff coming out and uh, some of the tangible commitments from the government on reforms to say that these are going to happen, uh, not only in terms of um, the, uh, the laws and the 
rules and regulations, but in terms of the implementation part of it also. So I think uh, we really look forward to that. I'll just take a quick digression before we come to the uh, final, uh, you know, sort of question to um, Minister Gemali on, you know, you'll be visiting Geneva, and we also hear that, you know, the investments are linked to our own uh, challenges on ending up the transitional justice issue. And as the U UN Human Rights Council is going to meet, uh, because this is some, you know, as we talk to investors, they do try to link these two issues. So what is going to be, how does Nepal uh, try to uh, put a good closure to this soon? So what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sujibji. As we are already saying, Nepal is unique. Unique in the sense that it is homegrown, nationally led, and mostly very successful. Uh, we have already uh, fulfilled its uh, political aspect, that is the uh, drafting a new constitution and uh, restructuring the state. Uh, we have already uh, fulfilled uh, its uh, uh, combatants and uh, arms and ammunition aspect. And now we are in the final leg of transitional justice. Uh, right Honorable Prime Minister Kapi Sarmawali, time and again has cleared uh, the Nepal's position that we will finalize uh, transitional justice uh, in the spirit of comprehensive peace accord. We have various commitments uh, in uh, international level. Uh, we will pay proper attention on that regard. There will be a no any blanket amnesty on the serious human rights violations. But basically, we will focus on how we can reconcile the society, how we can uh, heal the wounds of the uh, um, conflict. So that's why uh, it will. Uh, um, I will um, ask the international community, I will request the international community that uh, please be assured about the Nepal's capability and ability to uh, final, uh, finalize this process, and it will uh, set an example of the peaceful transition of the conflict. Uh, that will the major message I will convey in the uh, Geneva Human Rights Council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Gavali. So I think it's, uh, you know, time flies. So I, I think we need to come to uh, our final round. And I think I just thought that, again, looking forward, because um, our lessons of, again, working in Rwanda has been that uh, we currently are doing the business investment climate study there that feeds into the Davos uh, w WEF discussions so for 2020 for uh, Rwanda. So, in the, so if Nepal is going to be in, at Davos, it should be next year also 2020 in a bigger way uh, and have having side meetings. So what would be some of the, I mean, that could be sort of the final comments. What would be the three big things we would be wanting to go and talk about at Davos 2020 next year? What would be those three things? Dr. Kathiwala. Uh, well, uh, we have to have some more astrology into it, but uh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me make something predictable. Uh, uh, by 2020, we would be saying Davos that we would be no more being a landlocked country, uh, sorry, least developed country. Landlocked we remain, but least developed we, we, we don't have to. We'll be landlocked rather than landlocked. That's what our Prime Minister said to in Davos. Why I say so? We would be uh, one of the countries growing very fast, uh, even in the next two years' time. Uh, as a fastest growing economy, our disposable income would um, at least cross 1500 US dollar. We would be having fixed up all the problems associated with investment and we can say, look, how much infrastructure additionally we have created into the system. What kind of legal, regulatory and operational hurdles, uh, bottlenecks we have already cleared. How much of foreign investment we have already brought into the country along with also promoting our domestic investment and how, much, how many jobs we have created in the last two, three years' time. And that would be almost the midterm review of the government's tenure also. So by that time, we have also to deliver many of the things. We, do, we don't have any excuse then that we don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the legal background, we don't have the um, federal setup uh, been fixed up yet. Then we have to do many of the things before that, and we'll be able to tell the world that we can do development, we can deliver development in a peaceful and more justified manner and uh, our growth would be job intensive 
people would get job along with fair wages, factories of production, all including entrepreneurs would get their fair share of the risk they have taken. So Nepal would be one of the destinations best suited for not only investors, but also for the people visiting Davos to come to Nepal. Not that Davos is the only place to visit in the world. Nepal is not less important or attractive to visit the country. That message we have to give in 2020. Thank you. Thank you. That's, 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 a, that's a great uh, set of commitments. Um, Mr. Gemali, uh, any, any of your final thoughts you have as we are looking ahead? You know, I mean, it's a good, a good you know, sort of a destination to have, you know, 2020. And uh, we talked about tourism and all. It, quite two, three things that are coming into your mind. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, say that a strong, stable, prosperous Nepal is not only in the favor of Nepali people, but it is, it is also in favor of our neighboring countries and the global uh, community as well. So that's why where we are in the springboard of the rapid economic transformation, uh, we very critically need uh, the broader support and goodwill. Uh, Nepal's foreign policy fundamentally is enmity with all and enmity with none. All countries which have uh, engagements are not with Nepal. They all are friends, and we want a broader uh, development partnership and collaboration with them. We want to learn from them. We want to be a part of them. And second, uh, we are talking about the uh, Nepal in global stage. Unfortunately, the global stage is not very favorable for the uh, countries like Nepal, uh, for the LDCs, for the LLDCs. Uh, existing global order is uh, in geopardy. Uh, assistance is declining. It is a challenging time. However, we will manage. So uh, it is the right time to support, uh, to encourage, uh, countries like Nepal, uh, which uh, just uh, completed the tra transformation. So that, that's why we uh, ask, we request the global community, our friends, to be a uh, constructive, meaningful, and substantive partner of development in the hours of Nepal. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. This is, this is very uh, interesting. And I think uh, we can really uh, look forward to next year uh, Nepal in 2020, Davos 2020, and I think we'll have the next Kantipur conclave at the same time. We'll again hear what happened in 2020. And I think perhaps it would be uh, interesting to also have the uh, World Economic Forum Nepal meet in 2020. We should have a World Economic Forum Nepal meet in 2020 so that we bring the world to Nepal as we move into the global stage. Thank you very much to uh, Minister Khatiwara as well as uh, Minister Gewali uh, for your, you know, sort of taking time off your busy schedule and joining us in this conversation. Uh, this has been amazing, again, insight into what is happening. And again, a fresh, uh, you know, fresh breath of uh, sort of air in terms of trying to look at Nepal from a new pair of lenses and again to see how we can unleash its potential. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, thank you very much to Mr. Sujeev Shakya and Honorable Ministers for this session where they discussed Nepal in the global stage. I think Nepal in the global stage is uh, slowly but surely uh, starting to know or be known for all the right reasons. We are a country that is starting to open up and be ready for investments, a country that wants to take development, sustainability and conservation hand in hand. And uh, like the right, like right Honorable Prime Minister Mr. K.P. Sharma Oli yesterday mentioned, a country moving from a landlocked country to a land that connects, a land that bridges and a land that links. So with that, we end this session before lunch. Thank you everyone for joining. Please uh, make sure that you download the app of Kantapur Conclave so that you can ask the questions uh, through the app itself. Thank you very much to our moderator and our panelists for this session. The